Hey there, Eli coming at you again from OSA Carpentry here today with a little bit different of a video. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the routine maintenance that all of us reef keepers and some of us freshwater aquarists need to keep up with, and that is maintaining our RO filters, our reverse osmosis filters. This is something that I make sure is always topped up in the shop and that we are always fresh on our filter changes so that we are always offering clean and fresh RO water and pre-mixed salt water for you guys. But this is also something that's very important for us that might have an RO unit at home to make sure that you're always keeping up on changing out these filters as appropriate, to make sure that you're always offering the cleanest water for your aquarium. So a lot of us are using reverse osmosis filtered water or RODI water for our reef aquariums especially. And some people use it to soften your freshwater aquariums for really sensitive fish like discus and Altum angelfish. But for the sake of a saltwater reef aquarium, it is very important to make sure that you are offering the most pure water that you can get away with, ideally with a TDS reading of almost zero if you can, to make sure that you are not introducing harmful things such as chlorine, chloramines, and heavy metals that come from your tap water into your reef aquarium. So most of your invertebrates, especially corals and even things like shrimp, crayfish and the like are very sensitive to a lot of those dissolved solids in typical tap water. But using a reverse osmosis filter is going to get you as close to pure fresh water as you can, which is great for topping off that saltwater aquarium so you don't run into excess of those contaminants. And when you're mixing salt water, we'll give you a baseline water that is very close to pure salt water to make sure that you're starting off on the right foot for your reef inhabitants. So for those of us that keep an RO unit at home, usually you're looking at about a four or a five stage unit. Each stage refers to a different type of filtration. Most RO units are going to have two types of pre-filters, and that is your sediment pre-filter and your carbon pre-filter. These are the first two things that your incoming water from the tap is going to hit as it enters this reverse osmosis filter. So sediment filter is always your first filter. This is generally a one micron size, and this is something that can get changed about once every six months. With a lot of your modern RODI filters, most of your stages are going to be housed in a clear vessel, which makes it very simple to figure out when you need to change this. As you can see through this packaging, this sediment filter is a stark white, and as it becomes spent, as it becomes clogged, it's usually going to become tinted. If you have really heavy iron in your tap water, oftentimes it's gonna turn kind of a yellow or an orange, but if not, it is going to tint somewhat of a gray or a black hue, and that is a good indication that you are going to need to swap this out. Generally, you wanna keep it as clean as possible to make sure that water is passing through this efficiently and that you're getting sufficient water pressure through your RODI filter. Usually once every six months at a minimum is most important to change out these pre-filters. And when you notice that the sediment filter is clogged, it's always a good idea to change out the carbon filter along with it. This is a little bit harder to understand when it is spent, but making sure that this carbon block is always good to go is gonna make sure that chlorines and chloramines especially, and as some other contaminants from your tap water are not entering the RO membrane as chlorine, chloramines, and some of those other contaminants are something that will cause your RO membrane to become spent very quickly. So making sure that you change this out, again, usually once every six months, or as you notice the sediment filter starting to get clogged, changing both of these at the same time is most appropriate. These do happen to be probably the two cheapest parts of your RO filter. They are something that should be kept up to date at least twice a year if you can do so. And then just keeping accurate notes of when you change those out is helpful for future reference so you don't have to try to remember when was the last time you did that. After your water goes through your pre-filters in your RO system, the third stage is generally your RO membrane. This is actually usually the last thing that needs to get changed in an RO unit. These do last for quite some time. Oftentimes, 12 months is a good regime to change this out. And as long as you are not producing an insane amount of water, and as long as you are flushing your membrane pretty frequently. These usually will last at least 12 months, sometimes 16 months in certain circumstances, but just making sure that you change this out at least once a year is gonna make sure that you're always offering really clean water to your aquarium. This happens to be one of the more expensive parts of the RO membrane, but considering it doesn't have to be changed out all that often, as long as your pre-filters are up to date, this is usually the last thing that needs to get swapped out. Last but not least, most of your RO systems are usually just a four stage, but sometimes you have a couple other stages. But the last stage that your RO water goes through before it hits the tank is this DI or the deionization resin. 
These packages here are pre-packed DI resins, so it makes it a little bit easier. You can just take your old cartridge out and swap this one in. And as long as you're going with a color changing resin like you see in front of me here, it is very easy to tell when you're ready to swap out that DI. So this usually starts a dark blue color and as it becomes spent, it's going to transition to an orange or a gold color and that's going to let you know that this is ready to be swapped out. This is generally the thing that's going to become spent the fastest in your RO membrane. Unfortunately, this is one of the more expensive parts of the RO filtration system. However, this is pretty much the most important in making sure you're getting some of those contaminants out of your water. A lot of your metals like copper, iron, and some of these other contaminants are going to get caught, especially by this last stage of the RO unit and even things like phosphates and nitrates, if you do have them in your aquarium, are really going to get pulled by this last stage. So making sure that this is always up to date. And if you're noticing that most of this cartridge has changed color, again, these are usually housed in a clear housing in your RO unit. So it's usually pretty easy to tell when it's become spent. But once you see about two thirds to three quarters of this resin changing color in this DI stage, it is totally worth changing this out to make sure that you are offering the cleanest water as possible. And you all probably heard me talk about TDS a little bit earlier, which is a measure of the contaminants that are in your water. They don't necessarily have to be contaminants, but TDS stands for total dissolved solids. So it is a measure in your water to be able to kind of quantify how many things are actually dissolved in your water. Oftentimes it is important to add some sort of a TDS meter. This is a cool little option to add to your RO system because this has two different meters on it and these would go in line to your RO system. It's basically run off of a battery and every time that you start up your system, you can get a good reading. You can place this in two different spots. Oftentimes you place one right after your RO membrane in specific and then one after your DI. And that's a really good indication to be able to know when your DI is becoming spent as the TDS starts to creep up past that stage. And if it starts to creep up nearer to the RO membrane, it's a good indication of when your membrane is going to need to be swapped as well. So this is a pretty cheap option, but something especially for the serious reef keepers that's totally worth adding to those systems, a really worthwhile upgrade to make sure that you're always offering very clean water. Generally, I'm always shooting for zero TDS out of the DI stage of my RO filter, both at here and in my system at home, but generally shooting for three to five or less is most appropriate and offering the cleanest water you can to your aquarium. But generally, once you start to get above those numbers, you're really not certain as to what contaminants are actually getting into your water because this doesn't measure what it is. It just measures whether there are things dissolved in that water. And it makes sense to kind of shoot for five or below just to make sure you're offering clean, clear water that is not going to put your aquarium at risk. TDS meters do also come in a couple other forms. A lot of people do end up getting more of a pen style meter that you can use just to read the water coming out of your product line to make sure that you're offering clean water at all times. So as much as it is something that we tend to forget about, it is really important to making sure that your RO unit, if you do produce your own RO water, is always up to date. Changing these filters out really only takes a few minutes of your time and only usually needs to be done a couple or three times a year just to make sure that you're always offering clean water to your aquarium. So making sure that you keep good track of when you've changed these filters out and keeping consistent schedule with changing these filters out is going to ensure you some of the most success with your aquarium, especially with your reef aquarium down the road and is something that is generally cost effective in comparison to buying water. But that is something that we always offer for those of you that don't have the capability of setting up a unit in your home. We do always offer RO water and I keep that system running as clean as possible to offer you the best quality water that we can to make it a little bit easier on yourself if you don't wanna set up your own system. I hope that this got you thinking about making sure that your RO unit at home is up to date. And maybe I reminded you that it is probably time to change out that DI resin, change out that RO membrane and make sure that your system is working optimally. As always, thank you for tuning in. Feel free to leave us comments, questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And as always, keep on reefing.